Hey there, folks. <coughs> I'm that favorite cartoon character of all you, Wallace Gator. And here I am to introduce another fabulous Wallace. Wallace Ride, yay! Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh my god, it must be that time of week again for another episode straight from a secret, undisclosed, hidden location somewhere deep in the bowels of downtown St. John's Newfoundland comes in the Library of Graphic Literature, yay, with your host, me, Wallace Ryan. So how's everyone today? Good. Glad to hear. Um, it's not a bad day out here uh, on the far, far eastern reaches of North America. Um, it's actually, well, it's not that great to be quite honest. We have, we've had snow, we've had a little bit of rain. Today we have freezing rain. <laughs> so, you know, it's like snow that's wet. What kind of rain? So what that means is it's a horrible day to be outside. <laughs> Thusly, that's why I'm inside. Sipping tea and talking to you lovely folks. Mm -mm. <coughs> okay, any news? Any news that I can think of? Um, oh yes, of course. The big news is, of course, the there's two new episodes of Thursday Comics up uh, for you to watch with myself and Dennis. And, the, uh, and we're on Spotify now. So it'd be very easy to, to find us. Just go to Spotify, put in Thursday Comics, and boom, we'll pop up. And it, two of the episodes so far have been marked explicit. So, well, it is an adult, uh, adult uh, uh, podcast anyway, but it's a lot of fun. So check us out anyway. Just let us know what you think and uh, send along all your wishes and all that. Uh, this week, not a lot this week, so I do have a... a uh, spotlight artistic to do on a great artist so we'll get to that now in a second in the meantime let's slurp away at the tea mm, 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 mm. today it's um stash double bergamot oh hang on a second let's give this a little spin around wee, wee. <laughs> anyway so yeah yeah a couple of Little books here to, to chat about. Let's see what I got here today. Well, let's start out with. Oh yeah, why not start out with this here? This is a beauty, and I'm only saying that because it's a beautiful book <laughs> and a great book, and it's from those fine, fine folks at Boom Entertainment. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, you know, Boom has been booming lately. It's, I mean, they've been kicking butt with everything from something is killing the children to, I would just say everything, it's just like everything they they seem to touch now once in future, uh, future uh, everything they, they seem to put out lately is, is really hitting it and hit, hitting the industry hard, way to go. So congratulations to Ross and the whole bunch there. And of course this is from Matt Kint and Tyler Jenkins and Hillary Jenkins. Uh, but yeah, I, I've actually read the first uh, book in this series. Got to catch up, catch up a bit. But uh, I liked it. It's really, really cool. Once again, it's another one of those school for uh, young folks and uh, you know, unusual young folks to say the least. But yeah, beautiful art. Love the art in it. Nice story. Good old fashioned storytelling, nothing like it. Nothing better than good stories, you know? Good stories be beats great art and fancy covers and varying this and varying that all the time. I'm just sick of all the varying covers. Come on, folks. Knock off on the var varying covers and give some of the smaller guys a bit of space on the, uh, on the racks, hey? Okay. That's actually one of my big big peeves with the uh, variants is that they 
they take away valuable shelf space for other comics really that are a lot better so uh, DC and Marvel knock it off will you anyway uh, let's see next is this beautiful little book here why did we trust him by Shannon Wheeler do 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 no the Eisner Award winning Shannon Wheeler uh, now this one is uh, this is just a wide range of uh, uh, little cartoons from him Nothing in particular, but I love his, he, he, he got a great, great style. I mean, we, we all know him in the comic industry for his Too Much Coffee Man, but his individual cartoons and all that have gone way beyond they are. He is really good, right? I want kids. <laughs> I'm sick of your bull. Bull, beep. Come back here with those commandments. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> nobody likes the saint of the unappreciative. <laughs> so yeah, he he does great great cartoons. Waiting for Godot to leave. So yeah, some so once in a while I do like to show show a bit of a cartoon cartoons off. You know, comics cartoons, comic strips. It's all good. It's all one big happy family. Or it should be. Mm -mm -mm. Ah. And now, the last book, for, new book for this week. Um, actually, I think this one was it last week. Was it? Yeah, this is a little bit behind. Or is it? Anyway, uh, I don't think it is actually. Can you think of it? Um, from uh, the fine, fine folks at Fantagraphic Books comes volume six of. Pogo by Walt Kelly. Dun, 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 dun. Pogo, of course, one of the one of the great comic strips. Really, it's to me. I put it up there with uh, with Peanuts and uh, Calvin and Hobbes, and Doomsbury. Uh, uh, let's see what else. Uh, Terry and the Pirates, even. Um, but yeah, it's 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 political, it's it's sociological, it's it's absolute genius. I first came across these uh, when I was a teenager, and my friend uh, Jerry Porter was the one who would turn me on to them. And uh, I read them, and I mean they were great, right? Look at that art, the art, very beautiful style to the drawing too. I always liked his his drawing. And his lettering, actually, as a letterer myself, I actually really do like his uh, his lettering. So this is a, like I say, this is a grand piece from from the good folks here. Oh, and there's some color. Oh, it looks even better in color. If, if that was possible, it looks even better in color. <laughs> but yeah, very a great. I mean, filled with philosophy, everything. It's 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 just an absolutely amazing uh, comic strip. I can remember the first time when Jerry gave me he gave me like a best of collection. It was a pretty uh, pretty thick book, and I read it, and it was just like because I could remember Pogo from a kid, but sit back and read the whole thing and see. Uh -uh. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Walt Kelly, he was he was a genius, and I don't use that label lightly. Okay, now, oh, oh, oh. and now it's time for the spotlight artistic. And this week, uh, this week I will be presenting to you. The art, let me pull, pull up this page. The art, life and times of Alex Nino. Do, no, 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 boom, 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 boom. Now, I, I know a lot of people don't know who Alex Nino was. He was uh, born in 1940, May 1st. Actually, he's a May Day baby. And he's uh, from the Philippines. And he was he studied under uh, the great uh, comic book artist Jess, Jess Jelderman, whose stuff I absolutely adore amazing guy and um, in 1971 uh, 
Joe Orlando and Carmine Infantino invited him, uh, Alfredo Kahlo, um, Nesta Redondo and Jerry Tallock to DC to, to do some work for them uh, after they had such success with Tony Designiga and, uh, and the rest is history. Of course, Kayla and Redondo are very well known to, to a lot of comic book fans. Redondo, uh, well, I can't say Redondo is one of my favorite because Kayla is one of my favorite. So is Taliak, but Redondo even more so. But even more so with Kayla, but even more so with Alex Nino. Alex is is uh, totally, totally uh, an amazing artist. He uh, his layouts, his drawing, everything was unlike anything uh, I'd seen, at least when I first encountered him. He began in a lot of mystery titles and stuff like that and slowly graduated and moved on up in the world. I mean, he, he, this is a, now this is from one of the great uh, Curtis magazines, Unknown Worlds of Science Fiction. And this one here, this is Behold a Man, the Michael Moorcock story. Fabulous Michael Moorcock story, and it's now this doesn't this doesn't go as crazy with the layouts as his, some of his do, do, but I like to show this one off just because it's it was one of my favorite uh, growing up. I mean the story itself is absolutely amazing. So Michael Moorcock, one of my favorite writers, combined with Alex Nino, one of my Favorite artists. Oh, I mean, it was it was a match made match made in heaven. Let me tell you that much. Now he he done he done work for for everyone over the years. So I, I figured I'd pick pick out a few, few different things. Um, he did uh, an amazing. Speaking of uh, Curtis magazines, he did an amazing uh, job on this uh, Conan story for Savage Sword of Conan. Uh, number six, and he's he's a very he's a very abstract type of artist. So, in some ways, he's he's not the type of artist you'd ex expect for Conan, even though A. K. L. N. and the others ha had done it. And this was actually one of my favorite stories of his. This is the People of the Dark, freely adapted from uh, a story by uh, Robert E. Howard. I mean, look at that. Fabulous, isn't it? I mean, the artwork is just hard to, it's hard to describe him. I mean, still to this day, he's, I think Nino is still ahead of his time. And will be for a good while. I mean, look at this. I mean, this guy could, this guy could tell stories. I mean, look at that. I mean, come on. Don't tell me you're freaking out just looking at this, aren't you? Master of the tall, thin panels, too. And just to, oh god, his his artwork. I mean, he he does remind me in some ways of, in a very loose loose way of a a Kayla, but he's, and Talak and even E. R. Cruz to a bit, but he's so, so much his own creative force, his own, has and has mastered his own style. That it's, uh, it just blows me away. Just, just reading his stuff. So if you ever ever get get a chance, check that out. It's it's one of my favorite stories of his. He uh, he did he did a few stories. Uh, like I say, he did a lot of mystery stories, but he actually did a few issues of thriller. He took over from Trevor Von Aden, and I can remember when I bought those. It was just like, oh my God, Alex Nino doing something for DC Comics. <laughs> I went freaky. Um, Let's see now. Oh yeah, and then this thing here, which unfortunately I only have available in the soft cover. But this is a book, Theon, Theodore Sturgeon's <laughs> Theodore Sturgeon's More Than Human, the graphic story version. Do 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 no 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 no. Now this is adapted by uh, Doug Munch and Alex, uh, produced by Byron Priest Visual Publications. Byron Priest was pretty big there in the late uh, <coughs> late uh, 70s in terms of doing graphic uh, graphic novels and stuff like that. Uh, some absolutely amazing stuff. Now th this this one is 
once, and this is the thing about that I like about uh, Nino. This this book once again is different again from from his other stuff. This this one is the panels once again aren't as wildly imaginative. Uh, I mean, they're still be absolutely beautifully drawn, and the coloring is just stunning. And it's uh, <coughs> uses, of course, typeset text as the letterer. Uh, I don't like that. <laughs> I prefer handwritten. But yeah, absolutely beautifully beautiful. I love his his style. There's just something about it that's absolutely stunning. There's one panel here actually that even almost crosses over a little bit into. Uh, there, that that panel there, that always almost reminded me a little bit of uh, of Mobius, actually, funny enough. But Nino, absolutely one of my my big influences. Definitely, definitely in my top ten, easily in my top ten f favorite artists of all time. He just every story I've ever done, read of his, you know, pure delight. Uh, he of course worked a lot. With Warren magazines, good old Warren, and so now he did a lot of stories. So I just went through and I picked out a, a few just to show you, just to give you an idea into the genius that is Alex. Now this is always leave him laughing. This is a this is actually a Len Wein story. Look right here. Start in there. Once again, I mean, look at that art. Unlike, unlike anything you ever see these days. Filled with imagination and just great, great, great stories. Oh, and here we have from Erie. Let's have a look at what he got done here. Oh, yeah. And this is a, a Bill Dubai story. Like I say, it's just the whole. And the best thing about it was, he, he, unlike a lot of people, he could do these free form. Look at this. I mean, come on. He could do these free form pages and panel layouts and all that. But when you'd read it, it's it, they still held together very well. He was able to get abstract without losing track of the story, which, of course, to me, is a sign of of an amazing. Uh, comic book artist. If you're able to take a story and really push the envelope when it comes to the layout of it and all that and still still have the story readable, still be able to go from panel to panel to panel without losing your way and still be amazed, then that's that's some kick-ass comic book art. Now, last but definitely not least, this is one also from Nicholas Nick, Nicola Cuddy. Uh, this is one called Fishbait. And this one, once again, this one's amazing. This is from Vampirella, which of course had other, other stories in it besides Vampirella. He, uh, he'd done a few uh, stories around this time for, uh, uh, for Warren. And uh, I mean, they're, they're all bloody amazing. Uh, and it's funny, even when I was looking through this to find a few uh, a, uh, a few examples of his art, I came across the Vampirella stories and I started thinking, wow, this is, I, I can remember now reading these as a kid and all that, and, and, and it just brought back a whole new appreciation for Warren once again. It's just like Warren in my mind kept the American comics scene alive during the dark days of the... Comics Code Authority. Now look at this one, fish bait. I mean, come on, people, look. It's just absolutely stunning artwork. So you do you do you do yourself a favor and <coughs> hunt hunt down some of these. I mean, look at this. I mean, work that Ola, and he does the greatest monsters. <laughs> Darn cool! Look at that. I mean, come on, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at it. <laughs> anyway, 
But yeah, absolutely. I wonder if there's any other ones of his in here. Absolutely stunning. Uh, <clears throat> so if you if you have the chance, run out there today even, or the weekend, or even go online if you must. See if you can find some. You know, just see if you put in Alex Nino into the uh, into the Google and see see what treasures treasures it can bring you. Whew. Well, that's it for this week. Um, actually, I have to do a shout out <laughs> as I promised her. This is a shout out to Sophia. Hi, Sophia. I love you. Uh, I was playing uh, Roblox with Sophia, she, uh, my granddaughter, before I shot this show, and she said. Oh, I want you to do a, shoot out, uh, a shout out to me. So I said, okay, I will. And she, uh, as a matter of fact, just before I signed off, she beat me four games to one in Uno. So she's she's a smart cookie. Love you, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I love all the rest of you fine, fine folks out there in comic book world. And uh, I'll see you next week. In the meantime, don't forget, Thursday Comics Podcast, available on Spotify. Uh, watch it shared and tell all your friends about it and that's it in the meantime lots of love lots of love and comics to y'all oh no take me away take me away well that was fun Oh, forgot to turn off the camera. Damn it. Come on, turn off.